Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you the best high-end skin retouching method in Photoshop. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on notifications so YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video. To start editing your pictures in Photoshop, like to start high-end retouching, the first thing you have to do is to press Ctrl J on your keyboard. So once you press Ctrl J on your keyboard, but you have to first click on the background layer. Once you click on the background layer, just press Ctrl J on your keyboard. Once you have pressed Ctrl J on your keyboard, then you have to select your spot healing brush tool because this is the first tool that you have to use when editing your picture remember it's a spot healing brush tool so once you click on this your spot healing brush tool and you zoom in your picture once you zoom in your picture you just have to increase the size of the spot healing brush tool then you start applying it like you start left clicking on the blemishes as in on the pimples so you have to like remove it so once you are left clicking on it it's just going to be removing all those unwanted pimples on the face like all the blemishes so let me just zoom in this picture like this and start applying it and and as you can see it's kind of removing all the pimples from the face so i'm just going to clean this area and also clean this area once i'm done i'll just move to the nose area remember i select the spot ceiling brush tool then i move my tool to the pimples and i just left click so once i left click it's just going to remove all those unwanted things from the face so once i'm done i'm just going to move to this area to also remove it and i'm also going to remove it from this part and also this area and i think i'm done removing all the blemishes from the face now the next thing I want to do is that I want to create my frequency separation process, my high-end frequency separation process. So to do this, you have to just press Ctrl J on your keyboard. So once you press Ctrl J on your keyboard, double click on the layer name. So once you left click twice on the layer name, you just rename it to high frequency details. After you're done renaming it to high frequency details, just hit enter on your keyboard and once you hit enter on your keyboard go back to the second layer below just go back to the second layer below in case you don't have this second layer below and you have only your background layer and this layer above just click on the background layer or let's just click on this layer below the high frequency details and just press ctrl j on the keyboard so once i press this ctrl j it's going to create another layer copy so i'm just going to double click on this layer name like i will left click twice on the layer name and it's going to help me edit it so now i'm going to change it to low frequency color remember this name that you are changing on it doesn't have anything to do with the filters as in the name doesn't add any filters to your work like you are changing the name so it will help you identify that layer as in it's going to help you identify the parts of the layer as in which layer has this name and which layer has this name also like the use of the layer and the rest so that's why we are kind of renaming our layers in photoshop so renaming the layer to any other name you like you can rename it to any other name you like it will not affect the work that you are doing so once i'm done renaming to low frequency color i'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard i will turn off this high frequency details eye symbol here i'll just turn it off so this eye symbol is not going to be showing once i'm done i'll click on this low frequency color layer then i'm just going to go to filter blur and i'll select gaussian blur so now for this gaussian blur i'm going to be changing the radius to be five once i'm done changing the radius to five i'm just going to click ok now once you're done clicking ok you just have to turn on this your high frequency details layer again just turn it on by clicking on the eye symbol here yeah? so once you click on this eye symbol here yeah, it's just going to turn it on and you see that those our blur effects that we apply on the picture has disappeared from the image so now you have to click on this your high frequency details layer go to image select apply image 
Now once you have selected the apply image, you'll see your layer, change the layer to low frequency color, change the blending mode to be subtract. You are going to see subtract here under add. So once you change it to subtract, change the scale to be 2 and your offset to be around 1 to 8. So once your offset is at 1 to 8, just look at my settings here. So you are going to do it on your picture. You'll see the channel is RGB, blending with a subtract, opacity is 100, scale to offset 1 to 8. So once I'm done, I'm just going to click OK. Now the next thing you have to do is to change the blending mode option. So just go to this area here. You are going to see set my blending mode. Just click on it and change the settings to be around linear light so once you are done selecting linear light click on your low frequency color layer just click on your low frequency color layer and right click on it select convert to smart object so once you are done converting it to smart object head to filter blur and go to gaussian blur now we are going to be changing our Gaussian blur reduce to any number I like. I'm just going to select any number I like. But let me explain one thing about this Gaussian blur is that the more the size or the more the reduce of the Gaussian blur, the more effect it will have on our image as in the more filter and the more it will make our image to look as in very hard, something like that. So some people do complain that this the African separation process as in this frequency separation process in my last videos always make their picture very dark. And let me explain it here. That's because you are using a higher reduce or your image has, as in your image is a very low quality image or you are editing a smartphone camera image or you are editing a full body image. And that's why it's giving you that kind of black effect where you increase your Gaussian blur reduce. But for me, I'm using a very high quality image and it's a portrait picture. So my settings for my videos are mostly for high quality portrait pictures as in headshots or something like that. And that's why it's giving me a more better result when I do it than it's giving you your own result. So for your own pictures, let's say just reduce it to be around below 20 if you are editing a full body image. But if you are editing a picture like my portrait picture with high quality, I'm just going to leave it to be around, let's say, 47. Once I'm done selecting 47, I'm just going to click OK and you allow it to load. Now, if you look at this, your layer, you're going to see that it has created this smart filter layer and the rest. Click on this, your smart filter layer max, press Ctrl or Command I on your keyboard. So once you press Ctrl or Command I on your keyboard, it's just going to make the effect to disappear from the image. Now, what you're going to do is that you have to manually add all those things on the image as in, so it will not like affect everywhere. So just click on your brush, once you click on your brush, increase the size of the brush a little. Then you zoom out or you can zoom in any one you like. So once I just zoom in, I'm just going to change our foreground color. You can see this area, you'll see foreground and background color. You make sure this one above is white. So once this one above is white, the effect is just going to be applying on the image. And once the one above is black. Once the foreground color is black, you'll be able to remove all those effects and filters from your image. So I'm just going to click on this arrow, or I'll just click X on my keyboard and make sure the foreground color is white. And I'm just going to be applying this, our frequency separation on the skin. And as you can see, it's kind of fixing the skin for us. And the skin now look very perfect. You can see how the skin is. And you make sure that you don't edit these edges of the image. If you edit the edges, you have to clean it. You have to remove the filter or the effects from those area. So I'm just going to be very careful here while editing this image. And as you can see, it's giving me a very dark result here because I'm editing these edges of this her eyebrow. So I'm just going to clean it from this area. And what I'm just going to do here is that I'll have to reduce the flow. Once I reduce the flow, I'll come here again to kind of apply it a little on this area. And I'm also just going to move to this next part to edit below her eyebrow. Once I edit below her eyebrow, I'll just come to this next part too to edit below here. And now for this her eye bag, you have to just increase 
the flow of your brush move to this flow here you will see this flow around here just increase the flow to be around 61 so i'm just going to be able to clean the eye bag so if you want to remove the eye bag you just have to use this effect to just remove it and it will be very quick for you so now the next place i'm just going to go is her cheek i want to smooth that area to make it look more nice so i'm just going to be applying it now on this area once i'm done i have to move to this place also and also apply it below this area let's just clean it like this and apply it again so once i'm done i'm also going to apply it like this again and as you can see our image is kind of looking more better so i'm also just going to apply it on her jaw like below the lips and let me just be very fast so i'm just going to apply it on this part also and as you can see this area this area of her skin i don't want to apply it on this part so it's not going to clean that side of her cheeks like the dimple i don't want to clean it so i'm just going to load the flow to be around 24 and apply it a little on that part so i'm just going to be applying this our frequency separation now on this part once i'm done i'm also going to apply it on the nose and below her nose let's apply it below this area and as you can see i'm done applying this our frequency separation on the face i want to move to her fingers now so i'm just going to scroll down to her fingers and start applying it on the fingers even if the image is looking very smooth now don't worry we are going to fix everything and just continue watching and i'm just going to edit this area also and i'm also going to edit this part one more thing is that if you don't want to be doing all this long process you can get my magic retouching pack and also my lot pack and it has better nice actions and lots like if i click on these actions you are going to see this process that we just did this is the frequency separation for 8 bits frequency separation for 16 bits and frequency separation because this is just the process that we just did here so if you don't want to be doing all this long process you can buy my actions and once you just click on this frequency separation and you play the action it's just going to do everything for you and the only thing then you have to do is to just select your brush and start applying it on the skin so if you don't want to do all this long process visit www.dirtystudio.com once you visit my website you'll be able to download and um, purchase these nice actions so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to reduce the flow of my brush i'm just going to make my foreground color to be black once the foreground color is black i'm just going to zoom in my image and let's remove this our effect from this area and i'm also going to remove it from this area once i'm done i'm just going to remove it also from this area and i think that's all let's look at what we are doing let's just remove it also from below this area but it's not looking nice so i'm just going to leave it and remove it also from these eyes so the next thing now we are going to be doing is our dodge and bone what this means is that it's just going to increase the darker areas of the skin and increase the lighter areas of the skin and it's going to make the face or the skin to look more perfect. So what I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to click on this high frequency details layer. Once I click on this high frequency details layer, I'll just go to create new adjustment layer, select curves. Once I select curves, I'll just rename these curves to dodge. Once I rename it to Dodge, I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard. Now, click on this area. Once you click on this area, double click on it twice, as in left click twice. Once you left click twice, it's just going to open these properties. Once it has opened these properties, I'm just going to increase the curves. Dodge meaning like you want to increase the lighter areas of the picture. That means I want to increase the brightness. Once I've increased these curves, I'm just going to collapse it now click on this layer marks press ctrl or command i on your keyboard once you press ctrl i on your keyboard it's just going to remove the effect from the image select another curve once you select another curve this time you are just going to reduce the darkness of the image as in you want to make it to look more dark so once you reduce it once you have reduced your curves just collapse it 
click on this your layer mask press ctrl i on your keyboard now we want to group these two layers together so click on this your curves one layer just double click on the name and rename it to bone once you are done renaming it to bone hit enter on your keyboard make sure that this dodge is above the bone and anyone you like the bone can be above it but i just like my dodge to be above my bone so i'm just going to click on this my dodge layer once i click on the dodge layer i will hold control once you hold control or command you left click again on the bone layer and it's just going to highlight the two layers together now press ctrl g on your keyboard once you press ctrl plus g on your keyboard it's going to group the layer double click on this group name and rename it to dodge and bone once i'm done renaming it to dodge and bone i'm just going to hit enter so now i will expand this our group layer click on the dodge and start applying this our dodge effect on the lighter part of our image but as you can see the frequency separation process has make our lighter and darker areas of the image to disappear so what you are just going to do here is that you have to turn off this eye symbol for the two frequency separation layer as in for the high frequency details and the low frequency color so click on your dodge layer mask click on your brush you have to reduce the brush size so once you reduce the brush size and i'll have to go to this flow to reduce it to be around two so two for the flow opacity should be around 100 that's the best settings for applying the dodge and bone so i'm just going to reduce the size of my brush start applying this our dodge on the nose once i'm done i'm also going to apply this dodge on the cheeks and also apply it on this area and let's also apply it on this lighter part of our, our jaw let's just turn on this frequency separation layers and see what we are doing if we zoom in our image this is the before and this is the after we have add more lighter areas of the image but i think it's not much we want to add more so i'm just going to click on this area again to highlight it let's just increase the dodge and i think i'm done now select your bone once you select your bone you have to bone the darker areas of the image i'm just going to turn off this our frequency separation layers again so once i increase the brush size i want to just start applying the bone on this side or these areas of our nose so once i start applying it on this area it's just going to bone this area and i'm also going to apply it on this part and also reduce the size of the brush to bone this area also and this part and let's burn the cheeks also so i'm just going to increase the brush size apply it a little on this area and also apply the bone a little on this area now i'll turn on this our frequency separation layer to see what we are doing this is the before and this is the after i think the dodge and bone effect is now looking more nice on our image since I am done with the dodge and bone, since I'm done applying the dodge and bone and the frequency separation, and the image is now looking more perfect, but I want to do a little bit of extra editing, like I want to whiten the teeth, but you can check my other videos for a more better teeth whitening process, or you can also watch this teeth whitening process, or you can look at my future videos as in you can just wait for my next videos that i'm just going to upload you see more better ways of doing this teeth whitening process so once i click on this our dodge and bone layer i'm just going to go to creating your adjustment layer once i click on this creating your adjustment layer i will just select curves once i've selected curves i will increase the highlights of the curves i'll just collapse it but before then you have to make sure this your curves is above this dodge and bone so you have to just drag it up to be above this dodge and bone layer so click on the curves go to creating your adjustment layer again now you select vibrance decrease the saturation for the vibrance area just decrease the saturation to be let's say 100 and you can also reduce the vibrance to any number you like then you collapse that section now click on your creating adjustments layer again now you select photo filter for the photo filter just select cooling filter 82 cooling filter 82 click on it now make sure the density is around let's say 8 collapse it and that's all once you are done we are just going to 
highlight all these layers together so once i just highlight all these layers together i'm just going to right click on it and select group from layers so once i've selected this group from layers it's just going to show us new group from layers name you have to change the name to teeth white so once you have changed the layer name to teeth white click ok and it's just going to group it click on this your teeth white group layer first just click on it now hold alt on your keyboard alt and click on add layer max and that effect is just going to disappear from our image what this has done is that it has removed the teeth white effect from all the image and you are now going to apply it by yourself using your brush so click on this layer max just click on this black layer mask select your brush once you select your brush zoom in your image once you zoom in your image you can just use your opacity of the group layer to be around 80. now you start applying this your teeth white on the teeth so i'm just going to be very careful so i don't clean the bracelet like i don't clean this iron thing on her teeth so i'm just going to clean these areas of our teeth once i'm done i'll have to move to the next teeth and i'm also going to be very quick while doing it and i'm also going to clean this area remember your foreground color should be white but if you want to remove the effects from the teeth your foreground color should be black so i'm just going to remove it from this area and also apply it on this area once i'm done applying it on this area let's move to the next teeth to apply it on this teeth also and apply it on these areas once i'm done i'll just apply it on this teeth also and on this part and as you can see i'm also applying it on this area and i'm also being very careful so i don't like spoil my work and let's jump to this next teeth once we are done with this next teeth i'm also going to jump to this part and also this area i think the teeth is now looking more nice it's now looking more better than before i will skip this tutorial at this area so i don't waste too much time i'll just skip it and move to the ending part to where i'm done editing the teeth so I'm done with the teeth whitening process. Now the next thing I want to do is to whiten the eyes. So let's just zoom in the picture now to start applying this teeth white on the eye also because you can use it to also whiten the eyes and it's not going to cause any harm on the eyes. Let's just clean it from this area and let's apply it a little on this part. Once I'm done, let's move to the next eye to whiten this part of the eye. Let's just move to this next part to whiten the part of the eye. So once I'm done with this area, I'm also just going to move to the next area, which is this area. Let's also whiten this part. And I'm done. So the next thing you have to do now is that you can reduce the opacity if you like. If the work is looking more thick, you can reduce the opacity. And let's just leave the opacity to be around, let's say, 70 but before then, I want to adjust this teeth a little. Let me reduce my flow to just apply it on this part a little because it's looking somehow. So we are done adding everything that we're supposed to add on this image as in we are done with the fragrance separation. We are also done with the dodge and bone. And we are also done with the teeth whitening board. So we want to add a little bit of extra editing on our image as in we want to increase the saturation, the contrast, the vibrance of our image. So to do this, you have to just, let's say you have to highlight all these layers together up apart from the background layer so just click left click on this your teeth white layer once you left click on it scroll down to this your layer one layer hold ctrl and shift on your keyboard just hold ctrl and shift on your keyboard then you left click on this your layer one layer and as you can see it's just going to highlight all these layers together now press ctrl g on your keyboard so once you press ctrl g on your keyboard it's just going to group the layers for you once you are done click on this group one layer go to your creation adjustment layer and select brightness and contrast now you can increase the brightness of your image as in you can increase it to be around nine if you like but i'm not going to increase it and i just want to increase the contrast let's increase the contrast to be around 22 so once i'm done i'm just going to collapse it i'm also going to go to creation adjustment layer again and select vibrance 
and I'm also going to increase the vibrance to be around let's say 20 20 looks better once I'm done I'm going to head to this area again select our photo filter now this photo filter is just going to give our image a kind of filter if you like this kind of filter now if you like this orange filter you can use it but I normally like my blue filter as in this our cooling filter 82 so once I've selected it I'm just going to leave the density to be around 10 once the density is around 10 I'm also going to group all these layers together let's just group all these layers together so I'm just going to let's turn this off and click on this photo filter layer too. Once I hold shift and control, I will click on this, our brightness and contrast, press control G, and we are done with the editing of this image. But before then, we still want to group these two layers together again. So I'm just going to click on this one, highlight these two together and press control G again to group all of them together. I group this layer because I want to show you the before and the after of our editing. I want to show you all what we are done. So let's look at the before and the after. This is the before and this is the after. And we are done with this tutorial. Thank you for watching. If this video was very helpful to you, subscribe for more videos. Turn on notifications so YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video. And leave a like to help the channel out.